account with me, Rob Brown. And on behalf of the Global Networking Council, I'm delighted to have with me today Dave Domzalski. Hello, Dave. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Glad to be here. Well, it's fantastic to have you with us, David, all the way from Pennsylvania. And uh, you, you're an expert in entrepreneurship. You know what it takes to, to make entrepreneurs really tick and, and have them be successful. And we're going to talk today about the importance of networking, building great relationships, uh, connecting in the right space. Uh, tell us a bit about your background and your expertise, David. Sure, no problem. Well, I graduated from college in, in about 2006 from St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And when I graduated, I, you know, I was burdened with about $20,000 in student loan debt. And, you know, after a couple of years just kind of making monthly payments here and there, standard standard payments, I decided to really get myself in order and get my finances in order. And I made an aggressive attempt to pay down the debt. And, and a year later, in 2010, it was all gone. And in the news, you hear all this stuff about the financial crisis really thought that, you know, there would be other people in my generation that would really need to know this kind of information in terms of personal finance. It really mixes well. It meshes well with entrepreneurship. So I started the financial bin in July 2010, and uh, here I am talking to you today, and uh, we put a book out in November 2011. Well, the financial bin is really about getting your head around the numbers, isn't it? Tell us a little bit about the financial bin. Sure. Well, the goal of the financial bin is to help people become financially self-reliant. And I do that, again, as, as I stated, through a twofold effect. It's uh, personal finance and it's entrepreneurship, because I really think that's the kind of d- the direction that our world I- is taking, especially if you consider the United States and the U.K. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I really think that my generation, Generation Y, really needs to get behind these ideals. That's really what we focus on and, and, and what we really want to uh, help people perfect uh, going forward, really get a handle of their finances. And if they really want to start a business, well, we're going to help you do that, too. How financially savvy do you think modern-day entrepreneurs are? Well, you know, if they have an idea of their personal finances, they should be able to transition that into their business pretty easily. However, from some of the people that I've spoken with, it's actually kind of an enigma for some entrepreneurs. So we really stress that you need to get a handle of your personal finances first, because if you can't if you can't do that, you can't run a business. If you can't do your personal finances and you're you know make sure you're paying your taxes and make sure you're you're paying your monthly bills, well, you got a lot more important uh, things to consider when you're running a business. So uh, you know we really stress the personal finance first, and that's going to equate and you're going to be able to uh, perfect that in your business. That's a very good point. And thinking about the networking side of things, you see so many people that look like they've got it all together, they're working the room, their life and soul of the party, everything looks great, they're talking to everybody, but I suppose deep below the surface, uh, their life could be a mess, their, their wife or husband's not talking to them, they can't relate to the kids, You know, they've got all kinds of things wrong. Do you find that sometimes? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I definitely. Sometimes people are really good talkers and they can talk themselves up, but when it comes down to it, when you scrape away the the surface, the nice suit and everything, there's really not much left to them. Mm-hmm. You know, we're about building up the individual from the ground up, setting a foundation, and and that's really the way to, uh, you know, lead a good life, conduct a good business. Would you consider yourself a good networker? Yes, I would. I, I really consider myself a networker in training. I think I really started picking it up in college. And, you know, as I, I was an accounting major and I was really having to network with different firms and, and uh, you know, partners in the firm. So I was really lucky in that sense to kind of set a good foundation. And I think it's really helped me in my business because it's, uh, you know, obviously we'll get into it a little more, but it's really helped me, you know, build, uh, build my brand and connect with some great people. Do you have a, a dictionary definition? If we looked in, in David Zomzowski's dictionary, uh, what is an entrepreneur? Or what sure. would you come up with? Well, an entrepreneur is a risk taker. An entrepreneur is somebody that says, you know, heck with what everyone else is doing. I'm going to forge ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to focus on what I want to do. Uh, you know, not everyone is, is a, I'm going a little bit off of the definition here, but, uh, not everyone is made to be an entrepreneur, but if you want to be, uh, I believe, uh, if you put enough time into it, you can develop the skills necessary. Yeah. And I suppose if entrepreneurs are risk takers, would you define network as, uh, as risk takers with relationships? They're happy to put themselves out there and get around a bit. What would you say to that? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, I, I think by default you have to be a networker. Uh, so you need to, and again, you know, putting yourself out there in front of people, just you know, initially for your business, but then also when you're when you're networking, you're kind of selling yourself almost, and that that kind of runs the gamut from if you're if you're being interviewed for a, for a job. So if you're trying to pitch an investor, 
So really, I mean, you need to be able to have those kind of personal skills and be able to relate to people because if you don't, you're kind of just sitting there with um, nothing to do. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, do you think great networkers are born or made? Well, you know, Rob, when I'm asked a question like this, you know, and I'm glad you brought up networkers and entrepreneurs, but I, sometimes I find it difficult to answer. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of come to the conclusion that, uh, it, it's a case by case basis. Right. Uh, you know, I think there are people out there who are destined to be outgoing and they'll really feel comfortable meeting others, but, you know, it's something that actually just comes naturally to them. But, you know, that said, I also think that there, there are people out there who can accomplish anything if they set their mind to it. Yeah. You know, a person can become a great networker if they truly want to, become a great entrepreneur if they really want to. They can attend events and, 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 and work at it. You know, it's really up to the individual. I, I kind of, reside to the fact that, you know, we're all born with certain talents, and then there are others we have to develop. Mm. How important has networking been in developing your business? Well, it, it's actually been vital to my business ever yeah. since I started. You know, as I said, I, I, I started the Financial Bend in, in July 2010, and the main way to get my message out there was through networking. You know, without it, I'm kind of just sitting in my home office twiddling my thumbs with nothing to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's it's really through networking that I've been able to conduct podcasts on my site, which I started in, in December of last year, and get writers to contribute. And it's really what's allowed me to put my book, Entrepreneur Intervention, together. It's It really is one of the top sources of marketing my business and building the Financial Bin brand. So there's so many different styles and strategies of networking. When you say it's been important to you, are you talking about attending mixes and face-to-face -face stuff or all the online, like the LinkedIn stuff, or a bit of both? For me, for me, what it's really been focused on is online, and I, and I really want to get offline and really get into more mixers. That's kind of my resolution for this year. But you know, you know, networking or uh, social networking has really been great for my business, especially for LinkedIn and and Twitter. Yeah. Why would you want to take that offline then? Well, because you know, I think there's always something to be said, no matter how much technology we have out there. Uh, there's always something to be said with getting in front of somebody and meeting them. And, and you know, you, you know, even even while we're doing this on Skype, we don't get to see each other unless we're on a video chat. But even then, it, it's something to say, you know, just be have to have a cup of tea maybe and sit down and just kind of get to know somebody. I really think that's that's still important. We're we're we're, home, we're human beings. We're social beings. We need to be out there in front of people. Sure. Well, you're a good looking guy. I've seen the photographs, but you're right. <laughs> you you want to see the smile and the whites of their eyes, don't you? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, in terms of the technology that you mentioned, I mean, the, the networking landscape has changed over the years. How long have you been in this game? Really, I've been in this game for about a year and a half now. Okay, um, so you know, as I said, I graduated in 2006 from college, and I was just working uh, a regular job. And I, I still am working a regular job. This is kind of my the thing I do uh, as my side business, and I, and I want to continue to grow it and make it my only business. Okay, so you're... Uh, an internet native, if you like, it's always been there for you. You, you didn't go to the, the golf clubs and the, and the men's clubs in the past. You, you've always been online, haven't you? Absolutely, yes. So have things changed much for you, or has technology meant anything different? Uh, technology, well, like you said, technology has always been there. It's been, yeah. it's, it's been the main way. I mean, you know, it, it's actually, for my generation, I think it's a lot easier just to get on, send someone a text message or something rather than, uh, you know, rather than have a conversation on the phone, even or let alone in person. Have you seen face-to-face -face networking diminish in any way? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's diminished. I actually think with technology, it's probably increasing because it's allowed. You know, with like things like Meetup.com, it's really allowed uh, people to uh, put together face-to-face -face meetups. Mm. So let me put this to you then: we can network pretty much anywhere online. We can go to all of these mixes and networking groups and clubs, and sure. yet it seems that people are, are networking no better now than they were many years ago. They still make mm -hmm. mistakes. They still get it wrong. They still don't get ROI from networking. Sure. But why do you think that is? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's it's really up to the person. I think. I, I think it's sometimes. I think it's. I believe it's due to the, due to fear and or lack of effort. Sometimes, you know, it, it's so simple today to really contact anybody and you can and connect with people you know you can send a message to your favorite sports star or movie actor with a tweet hmm. so, so to me there's really no excuse to not get yourself out there i mean if it's a if it's a fear of rejection you know you kind of need to resign yourself to the fact that you know of all the people you, you attempt to connect connect with you know maybe one percent to five percent will be worthwhile 
you know, either either someone won't respond to your email or message, or you know, maybe you just don't share the same ideology. You know, but that's okay. It kind of becomes a numbers game. Mm-hmm. You know, what I what I tell people is just keep going, and that's really all you can do. Just keep putting yourself out there. In tough times like we're in, a lot of people are struggling. Do you think that the recession is having an effect on the way people interact with each other? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, to to a degree, but I, I think it, you know, it, at times like this, you kind of need to be putting yourself out there that much more. I mean, now is the time to really. I mean, it, I mean it's almost like marketing. You know, when times are tough and mar- with when times are tough and the economy is tough, you must be out there marketing that much more. And I and I kind of equate the situation almost to the real estate housing bubble that happened in America. It, it was a time when if you fogged the mirror, you got a home loan. And people were lined up around the block, and houses flew off the market in, in days, you know, if not hours. And, and today, though, you know, those real estate agents that did not adapt to the changing market, they're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, the agent that is successful today relies on his relationships, relies on networking. So, you know, my agent, the guy that helped my wife and I get our first house, what he does is put on Q&A panels for other agents and home buyers. He's one of the most successful agents in my area. Now, why is that? It's because people who bought and sold a home from him, they go back to him. He's got a vast network of customers and agents and, and mortgage brokers that he's, he's, uh, you know, brought up through, through the, through the course of his, you know, 15 years in the business and they help him when times are tough. That's what carries him through. So, you know, it really all comes down to forging quality relationships in business and in life. And that's going to carry you through the tough times. Mm. That's an excellent example of excellence in networking, isn't it? I mean, there's somebody that's found a system and made it work for them. How would you describe excellence in networking? Well, I actually kind of actually have another example for you for that. You know, I, I'm a member of Under 30 CEO, and it's a, it's based in New York, and they and they focus on uh, you know entrepreneurs who are you know the the younger version entrepreneur who's a, maybe in Generation Y age group. And and one of the founders, Matt Wilson, he he recently posted an article maybe a week or two ago about the network he built before starting under 30. He, he spoke of being able to call up a few people in many major cities and, and being able to schedule a dinner or a hiking excursion. And, you know, and, and so why was this? It, it really was due to the connections that he made while putting on conferences to expand the under 30 CEO brand. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So this, this helped him you know, meet not just acquaintances but, but solid contacts, even friends. You know, that to me is networking excellence. It really it's, it's the pinnacle of networking, I, I believe. It's, it's de- developing relationships, quality business contacts, and, it, and a real mutual respect for each other. You've given two terrific examples there, and what distinguishes them both is the fact that instead of going out to networking events of other people, they've set up their own events and brought the world to them. They've dictated the guest list, and they said who's coming to the party, and they've got that kudos of, of being the man in charge. Is that a good formula? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the things that I that I plan on doing down the road for for the financial event. I mean, you bring people who who want to be there, you know, rather than I don't know, maybe some job fair where somebody's trying to, you know, they're lost, they don't know what they're doing. But here, yeah, yeah really, it's qualifying the people before you even having the event. Tell us a little bit about the book, the triumphs, the failures of entrepreneurs. I mean, it's a cracking strap line. Tell us a bit about how it came about, David. Well, really, as I said, I, I started this business, really, the, the, the tagline is to help Main Street help themselves. And, and I thought of different ways to do that. It was almost kind of taking the, the chicken soup for the soul approach. And I, and I went out there. I just reached out to people via Help a Reporter Out. It's helpareporter.com. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I just reached out. I posed a couple of questions to people, and the, the response I got was amazing. The, the people that I learned as, as I was starting my own company here, as I was starting the financial bin, I learned a lesson that each one of them talk about. So all 28, I, I've learned all at least one lesson that they talk about in their, in their write-up. So it was, it was simply amazing. And, and, you know, the response that I've gotten has been amazing in, in and of itself as well. I mean, people have – have said, this is what I need to kind of keep going. It's it's so inspirational. It was actually kind of cool because the way I put it together was that it was kind of a built-in marketing and also a built-in client base almost too because the people that were writing in, they wanted to buy them for their clients and pass it on, and they wanted to tell everybody about it. Yeah. So it was really, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm going to use the same approach again with another book. 
it's just been remarkable. It's really nice having a tangible product to give people. You know, so when I am networking or when I'm trying to network with people on, on social media, I can send them a copy and say, look, this is what we're, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And it's actually been great because there are colleges and universities uh, here in the United States that have actually said to me they want to use it for entrepreneurship classes. It's a great reputation building tool and uh, it's a great read. I've read it. There are so many examples of entrepreneurs that, Sometimes done it by the book, but sometimes gone off script. But what's in common with all of them is that they need people to get where they are. Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, you you can't do anything alone. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're if you plan on doing this alone, you might as well get out of the game and just get a regular job because <laughs> it's not going to happen. Absolutely. In terms of your own networking. Uh, what's working really well for you at the moment, David? Well, a- as I said, you know, it- it's it's really been Twitter, it's been LinkedIn, and, and good old fashioned email. Uh, you know, I-, I target specific influencers for my podcast and people I want to I want to network with. And you know, as I mentioned, you know, there are college and university professors who I've reached out to, and uh, different uh, entrepreneurial uh, centers and, uh, and associations that have really given me some great feedback. Mm-hmm. So that's re- that's really been great for me and help a reporter out and Reporter Connection and um, uh, RadioGuestList.com have been great, too, because that's allowed me to, to, to get out there and try to become guests on other programs, and it's also allowed me to get some guests on my programs. Mm. So, you know, it, it's, it's really like I said, Rob, you need to, be, you need to put yourself out there. Yeah. And I, I forced myself to be more of an outgoing person. I wasn't a born networker, but I am learning to become a better one. So social networking has really broken down the barriers for aspiring entrepreneurs. And, you know, using that coupled with, as I play, as I said, I plan to attend more events geared toward my industry. It, it, I think it's really going to help me grow my brand. And I would definitely advise any other entrepreneur to do the same. Yeah. I'm going to ask you in a minute, David, if you'd leave us with, with a couple of tips on, on how people can network a lot better. But just before I do that, sure. uh, if people want to learn more about what you do and, and look at what Financial Bin's doing and take a look at the book, how might they reach you? Sure. Well, the best way to, to reach us is financialbin.com, all one word. And you can also follow us at, at financialbin on Twitter. Those are the best ways to reach us. And if you need to send us a quick email, shoot me an email at david at financialbin.com. And can they pick up the book from there? Absolutely. They, when, when you, you can pick up the book on financialbin.com. You got it right above the, the, the logo there. You'll find, uh, I believe it's 3N, the book. You just click on the book and you'll be able to get it for Amazon, create space and paperback, and for Kindle, for your Nook, for iPad, iPhone, and for your Sony reader there, too. We, there's no uh, excuse we, not to read it, is there, really? <laughs> there's plenty of ways. It, there's no excuse not to, exactly. <laughs> well, this has been terrific, David. Would you uh, leave us with a couple of David Domzalski nuggets on how we can all raise our game with connecting with people, um, networking, all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. I, I think... I mean, for me, Twitter has been the best invention known to man. It's it, it is literally is better than than sliced bread. Yeah. I, if you want, if you really want to get out there, you really want to meet some people. All you got to do is just send them a message. It, it can't hurt. I mean, may, like I said, maybe one to five percent will actually respond, but it's that one to five percent that's going to help you. Yeah. So get that. Get out there. You know, research people. Research your sector. Find out who the influencers are. And just put yourself out there and send them a quick note. It can't hurt. All they can do is not respond or say no. You bring up an excellent point. We can reach anyone. Now, whether they listen or not is another matter, but you can connect with people, and it is a question of taking some risks, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's like we said at the beginning of the program, Rob. Entrepreneurship is about is about risk taking. I mean, that that really is one of the attributes I would say that that goes in the definition in Webster's. It, yeah. It's about risk taking. You got to put yourself out there. Mm. And if you don't, if you don't network, if you don't, you know, try at least try, you, you're just sitting there. You're not doing anything. Yeah. I mean, and you're gonna and you're you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, there's a great Chinese proverb that says, "To know and not to do is not to know." Absolutely. Absolutely. If if you know the route to take, and we're talking about it right here, this is this is a, a route that is working for me right now. If you know about it, you don't do it, you might as well not know it. That's that, that's the 21st century uh, spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, David Domzalski, that's been terrific. Thanks so much for your time today. Uh, no problem at all. It's been a pleasure.